Want to nail engineering manager interviews at Mang and other top tier companies? You can. With USA's number one tech interview prep platform, we have 300 plus SMEs and instructors from top tier tech companies to help you land your dream job. We've helped thousands of engineers make their way into Mang. You could be next. To learn more, register for our free webinar. So uh, I think this is the first time that we are meeting. Is that true? That is, yeah, it's true. So um, I was working as a backend software engineer on our data, sort of data infrastructure. So it's focused on building this unified data layer. So okay, great. So what kind of position are you looking for in the next step? Um, probably more of a backend uh, software engineer, just kind of trying to get out of at a company i think that um more aligns with my values and sort of what i want something that's more focused around uh sort of that that data space like um sort of uh more like data engineering focused um where i can interact with data scientists and kind of help build out that infrastructure is, is something that i'm pretty interested in yeah, so uh, I think you have to be a little bit, at least later on, you have to make up your mind about which direction you want to go because the interview structure is a little bit different. Sure, if you want yeah. to go for a generic software engineer, uh, uh, it is mostly about coding, data structure, algorithm, and uh, system design. If you want yeah. to go to the data engineering path, it's a little bit different. Cool. There is a C coding, but the coding is not uh, similar to the that much of uh, the, the slit coder mm -hmm. style. It might be. Uh, you have, there is a lot of focus on SQL, Python uh, programming. Uh, when I'm saying Python programming, it's mostly on maybe more a simpler data structure. And there should be some focus on uh, ETL pipelines, designing a backend on the data intensive uh, parts, how to, you want to design pipelines of data processing, this kind of things, okay? Uh, so, but yeah, uh, it's good that you have experience and interest uh, on, both of these areas, but when it comes to the interview, uh, they they are they are a little bit different from each other. Yeah, that's good to know. Thanks for the, the information. Okay. But maybe just some better, maybe some feedback for me. It sounds like since I probably have more application engineering experience, I should just say general backend engineer. Um, even though I've worked on teams that have sort of sort of focused on data infrastructure and building out data pipelines. So for today, yeah, absolutely. For today, we want to do a sorting interview. Is that true? Yes. OK, I'm going to share a problem with you on the code bank. Uh, so would you mind sharing your screen with me? Uh, sure, of course. So just to uh, read through it, so given an, an almost sorted array where only two elements are swapped, how do I sort an array efficiently? Um, OK, so we have inputs. 10, 20, 60, 40, 50, 30, and just different. Yeah, I mean, so there's a couple sorting algorithms. Uh, I think in general, the most efficient ones, depending on what you want, we have um, selection sort and merge sort. Um, I think the challenge with, um, so I think that the uniqueness of this problem is that the, the array is mostly sorted. So um, the performance of, I believe, uh, merge sort is um, like if the, if the array is already sorted, it's uh, n squared. Um, so that's sort of less than ideal. I mean, there's ways to get around that by um, having uh, diff sort of different, a different pivot, or a sort of three, three pivots. Um, so, so yeah, um, I guess, I, I guess to, to, to get some more clarity, um, what, uh, what's the most important um, factor in your sorting 
algorithm? Do you do you care about consistency or I should say um, or or auxiliary space or what what's the priority? Uh, so uh, I prefer this to be faster. Okay, so when you say faster, um, I mean so you talk, talking about the time complexity. Just time complexity. So do you care about storage complexity or no time complexity? Just time complexity. So storage is not an issue. Uh, uh, well, it doesn't mean that it is not an issue, but I want to see okay. what are the uh, what you want to do with that. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think uh, so. Selection sort is a in log in algorithm um, that doesn't utilize any space, uh, and it's it's an average case of O log n and a worst case of n squared. Uh, so it's I would say less consistently fast, but um, it, it is generally the fastest sorting algorithm. Do you think that's a acceptable implementation to start doing that? Uh, so maybe you want to see if you want to benefit from the input, right? If I give you an arbitrary input, uh, you can use any of this sorting algorithm, right? Uh, but we know that this is just uh, two elements of this input has been swapped. I see, but I, I guess we don't know where those two elements are. Is that a true statement? Yes, we don't know that. Okay. Um, so I think that's the that's the challenge. Um, So, yeah, um, I mean, I think there's, uh, <laughs> potentially, um, Yeah, so so I think the challenge is because because the 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 consistency of where there's no consistent place in the array where there where, where you, um, it's not sorted. I, I guess I'm having a little bit of a challenge um, with that part. Uh, just just sort of thinking out loud. So um, I think in a general case, like quick sort is an optimal algorithm. So the challenge of this problem mm -hmm. is that it's mm -hmm. mostly sorted and there's a random position where there's um, uh, uh, an unsorted section, just, just sort of two elements that are swapped. So I guess I'm a little bit unsure on how to identify where that position is and how that would necessarily, I mean, I guess we could, I guess we could loop through the array. I guess we could loop through the array mm -hmm. and um, just figure out uh, where one of these elements is. Um, mm -hmm. Bigger than the other one and just swap it. So maybe but, that uh, is. Maybe yeah, that is I think, a, but how do you want to find that? Oh, I mean, you can just traverse through the array since it's mostly okay. sorted. So we can just step through it and then we can, yeah, we could just uh, look at the previous and if, or the current and the next, let's say, and then if the um, the next is bigger, then swap it and then we know we're done. If it's only one position. Yeah, but. So if I understand your logic correct, you are going to say, I'm going to compare the, the element at the current position with its next element, right? And if That's it was, right. I mean, it, if it was a smaller, you want to do what? You want to swap what with what? 
And then you are going to swap, you need two elements, right? That's correct. So uh, I'm just thinking you're you're given you're you're stepping through um and mm -hmm. you're you're at say index plus one. So you're uh that's your start of the loop, and then you're um looking at index and comparing that to index minus one, and if there's a so if index minus one is let's see greater than index, then you would do a swap. Okay, can you run this idea on a couple of examples to see if it is working? Yeah, of course. So you, I think we're at the stage where you want to code it out. Is that a true statement? No, 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 no. I'm oh. saying that kind of oh, like run this idea. Yeah, just maybe this is an example. What is happening if you want to? run this idea on this example one. I see, yeah, so on line item 12, we have 10, 20, 60, 40, 50, 30. Oh, there's, there's two elements that are swaps. I see, so that's the challenge then. They're not ne next to each other. Yeah, um, absolutely, that is, that is the part that they are not next to each other, absolutely. So I mean, if there's a two, maybe there's a two-pointer solution. Um, that we could utilize. Let's see, ten, twenty, forty. So I guess we could determine if we got two pointers, maybe. And we to if we if we were able to determine um, if those numbers were out, were not in the correct order, uh, then we would swap them with each other. So maybe you could do a pass to figure out where these numbers are not in the correct order, which number, which two numbers are not in the correct order and then, then swap them. So I would know, I would know if 60 is not in the correct order because it doesn't, it's not 30, <laughs> right? Same with 30 is not in the correct order. So I guess what I'm saying is um, basically find the two indexes of the out of order uh, numbers and then swap them once we find the, find the index. Yeah, I think that is a good idea, but uh, the challenge is that how do you want to find them? How do I want to find them? I mean, I can just loop through them and um, I'll, I, I always know that there's two of them, so I can sort of do the same strategies before where I traverse through the, uh, the inputs. So I have I minus one and I have I, and let's say I minus one is 20 and I is 60. Um, in this case, I, I maybe I need three. <laughs> uh, I guess it would be almost like I minus one and I plus one. And if there's something that's out of order, then I add it to a array. And then, um, so that's pass one, and then I'll just swap them. So why do you need three, three, and what are you going to do with this three? I assume that you need. You are saying that you need three indices. Is that what you was, you are saying? Well, I, I, I'm thinking that. So in the case that. Um... So this is the part that I understand. You are saying that I'm going to go to a loop. Uh, you have a loop uh, maybe from zero to n minus one. That is, I understand. What I don't un want, to, want to understand is that what is the logic uh, uh, logic to find uh, elements? Yeah, so I, 
I guess what I'm saying is uh, the, what, the three that we, so if you have the current index and then the index before, so if I have, let's say, um, 20 and so if I'm at 60, let's say my previous, my previous number is 20, um, then without knowing that the next number is 40, I don't know if the array that, that 60 is not the correct, not sorted. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I need the mm -hmm. current index of 60 and I need to make I need to look at the previous. So mm -hmm. on line 15, the previous is 20. Mm -hmm. And the next one is 40. With those, with, this, with those two inputs, I'm able to determine, oh, well, 60 is not mm -hmm. um, in the correct position. OK. And what about, uh, so let's say you, f you find that 60 is not in the correct position. But what are you going to do after that? Oh, I'll, I'll, once I find the 60s is not in the correct position, I'll add that to, uh, really, mm -hmm. I just need like a tuple of two. But in this sense, I'll just probably add it to a, mm -hmm. just like a, a list um, of two. And then, or or an array of two, let's say, it doesn't matter. And then, uh, so after I traverse through line 15, I'll have that array of two elements. And then I'll just run a swap on those two elements in the input array. So we're, we don't need any extra storage and I just need to loop through the input array um, a single time. Okay, so so far what I understood is that maybe you understood that 60 is not in its place. Okay, so what, what, with what element are you going to change 60 with? Oh, well, there, well, there's two, sorry. So, I mean, I would continue to find um, that, continue on to find that uh, 30, like, basically, if, if we don't have a next and the previous, in this case, we know that, we know that 30 is not in order because the previous 50 is, um, bigger than it. So I would I would add that to the integer array as well. So in this case, I'm just traversing through, um, you know, start at 20, 20, 20 is fine. And then 60 is not correct. I add 60 to my list. 40 is fine, 50 is fine, come to 30. And because 50 is bigger than 30, I'll also add that to the list. So then I have my two um, two numbers, so two indices, I should say, and um, then I'll swap those two indices with those numbers. And what are those, so what are those two indices? Uh, on line 15, the indices would be two and Five. Okay, maybe uh, maybe you can try to code this up if it, let's see if, if it is going to work. Yeah, sounds good. So um, so we have this main function, and let's just get rid of this. So I'm going to say int array of, and let's just copy this right here. Um, and we'll call it test one. Uh, and we want this function um, almost sort sort. <laughs> Who knows? And almost sorted sort. Let's call it that. Sounds fun. Okay, so. And almost sorted sort, we're going to, let's just um, do this on an integer array.
So I have this integer array. And so essentially, we're going to do test one. We're going to say almost sorted sort. <laughs> and you can just print this out when it happens. Yeah, so in almost sorted sort, we basically um, we have a array, so R equals this, and we want to say um, so for, uh, let's say, i in um, array dot size, or I should say 1 until array dot size. And we're just going to initial actually uh, we'll just have some space basically it's really a space for um, mutable list of our two our two indexes so we'll call this index to swap and it's gonna mutable list of so we're going to so I, so this is my test case so basically if um So I said, so we want to say if number is smaller, so what is if prev number, previous number is smaller and next num is bigger, add. Um, I guess the edge case, edge case is so, so if next num is null, or if next num equals array dot size, and current num is um, smaller than previous. So let's just code that out. So so we say uh. Val next num is going to be an integer uh, if um, Well, if array
Yeah. So um, basically, so we're at this. I'm just so it, um, next num if it's null. So basically, there's no next num um, because we're at the end of the list. And let's see, current num is less than previous num. Then we want to, so so if next num is null, that means we're at the end of the list um, because we're just saying, just from line 18, we're just saying if i plus one equals array size, um, that means that uh, we're at the end of the list. So we're, we're going to add null, else we'll grab um, that number out of the array. So if, if if we're at the end of the list and um, it's supposed to be an and, <laughs> and uh, current num is less than previous num, we are going to uh, add index to swap. Um, we're going to add array i. Else, if let's see, um, previous number the previous number actually not if number is not equal null and next num is greater than current or next so uh, if next num is not equal null and next num um, so if next num is smaller than current num or or if um, prev num so if next number does not equal null, next number, next number, so that's one of them. Else if prev num is, um, so previous number is uh, bigger than current num. I think those are cases. So, That's, oops. And then we could just have a little C, let's say for swap function, fun int array, swap I integer J integer. Blah. So we're going to say uh, this i equals this j. And we're going to also, so it's very similar Python syntax, familiar with that. If this um, j uh, equals this i, so just a little swap function. And then we're going to uh, say um, array swap. And we want to swap our index to swap zero, index to swap one, and um, it's in place, so we don't have to return anything. Um, so just to run through this, let's see. Put this right here. just to get some uh, resemblance of organization. <laughs> I think normally in code, I wouldn't comment, but just because it's an interview, I just want to make sure I'm covering all my bases. Um, comments can be a little bit noisy sometimes. It's better to use function names. Uh, so if previous num is smaller and if 
Next num is bigger. Okay. And current num is smaller than previous. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna kind of like I said, go through the array until size, and then we're gonna uh, pull out all these numbers. And if next number is empty, we know we're at the end of the array, and current is smaller than. <laughs> okay. And current is smaller than. Um, previous, then we need to, we need to add the swap. If next num is not null, and so if next num is not null, next num is smaller than current. Uh, we also need to add it to the list. And if previous number is smaller. Or sorry, previous number is greater than current number. We need to add to the list and swap. Um, so does this approach sound reasonable? Uh, did you have any questions so far? We're at. I think that is good. What I want you to do maybe in the next step is to just go to the uh, first example and uh, draw it on that. I don't want to run that. I just want you to draw it on that. Uh, maybe mentally debug this actually. Okay. I see. Yeah, sounds great. So yeah, um, so, so we're in index one. So it seems that in the beginning you have you have this, right? Is that true? Uh, and yeah, I think i is one at the beginning, and maybe the prenom. What is the value of pre? Is the value of next? And what is the value of uh, current? Right? Maybe you can initialize them and see what is the value that you get at the very end. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, so if i is one, the prenum is going to be ten, and the next, let's do pre next is sixty. Um, just to be sure, so we can just say i plus one. So i is one. Um, i plus one is two. So zero, one, two, or at sixty, um, and we're not at array size. So um, null, else, um, array plus one. So array i plus one um, is 60, and current is r20. So in this case, if next num equals null, so not the case. We go to the next one. If next num does not equal null, it's true. And next num is less than current num. So if next num is less than current, it's not true. It's bigger. Uh, so we go to the next one. If previous num, if previous num is greater than current, not the case. So we don't add anything to the index. So then we go to our Next one, which is, so current is going to be 60. Uh, and previous is going to be 20. And next is going to be 40. And so in this case, uh, next one does not equal, next does not equal null. Um, so next is not equal to null, and uh, next number less than current. So next number is less than current. Oh, sorry, so dumb. Let's just, we want to add the index, not the number. Mm -hmm. And so that's that gets added um, because 
next num is smaller than current. Um, and so we add current, which is I, which is what we want. Uh, and, and do you mind if we just skip to the 30? Or do you want me to traverse through 40 and 50 and 30 as well? Uh, I want you to maybe how do you find the last one actually? So I think yes, you can go very fast, right? So, uh, so where are we now? I think we are, what is the value of I? Oh, so I, I is uh, two. Okay. So what is happening after that when you go to that next one? Uh, when I go to I3, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, or, yes. When you go to I3, okay. is this is this condition is going to happen? What is the condition that you want to trigger when you go to I3? Uh, I3, I, I don't want anything to trigger. Um, so it's just going to pass because, okay. well, let's see. I mean, we, we can double check. Um, so I is 40. Um, let's see. So previous number is greater than current number. So that's true. So I guess we need a and condition here. So and uh, next. So we'll just say next num does not equal null. And uh, next num. So I equals three. So next num, so current is 60. So one, two, three, current is 60. Is that right? Four, sorry, current is 40. Let's add these right. Next is 50. See, this is 60. So um, current is 40. So, so before I had, if uh, previous num is greater than current num, so previous num is greater than current num, which is true. So I guess this is a challenge is that, um, so in this situation, previous, was out of order, so it makes it look like um, 40 is out of order, but 40 is not out of order. OK, so what is the time complexity of this algorithm? Um, the time complexity would be O to the N, um, because you're just traversing a single time. It's face complexity. I mean, you have it's a, it's a constant. Um, you just have that mutable list. Okay, what about the space complexity? Yeah, so, sorry, that space complexity is a constant. Um, you're you're just doing in-place swapping, and then you're um, you're you're storing a uh, two a a, a a a mutable list of two. Okay, sounds good. Let me spend some time to share my feedback. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think you started with a generic algorithm, uh, which was fine to start with. But when, when I'm saying generic sorting algorithm, it is uh, it means that you are going to kind of uh, ignore any properties of your input. And you don't want to pay attention to the fact that your input is almost sorted, right? So almost you are going to pay the cost of the full sort, uh, which could be as good as n log n, or maybe it could be in the worst case, it could be a, a n squared, right? So definitely you have to uh, think that maybe in this situation that your input has some properties, you could do better, right? Uh, and yeah, that was the point that I asked you to, to look at the input and uh, you you were trying to see if I can find the indices of the positions that have been changed, okay? Uh, so in the beginning, you were just, uh, developing the logic for single element, which was not sufficient. You need two elements to be swapped, okay? Uh, 
I think you kind of you are converging into a solution, even though I I, I am not hundred percent sure that it, the current code is going to work. But you can kind of handle some of the edge cases that it can work actually. Okay, but the problem with this code is that it's very hacky. Uh, when I'm saying hacky is that there are a lot of uh, unnecessary checks. And yeah, totally. Solutions, yeah, one of the solutions to ha to handle this is to use two pointer approach, uh, and in a two pointer approach. You have to start from left, uh, and you have to find an element who is uh, smaller than its previous element. Okay. When you find that element, it means that the the previous one should should is out of the order. This gives you the i element. You have to also once start from right, and when you start from the right, whenever you find an element uh, that is. Uh, for example, 50. 50 is, when you go from right to left, 50 is uh, bigger than its previous element, which is next element, if we, if we assume that in the order of the elements in the array. When you see such a thing, this gives you the next element that should be swapped, right? So that is super easy. Like, I mean, in terms of a condition, it's very simple. Just compare i to i plus 1 on the, from left-hand side and compare i to i minus 1 from right-hand side, OK? And this gives you kind of element that should be swapped. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I think I just uh, got in my head a little bit. And um, I, yeah, I, I had mentioned two pointer, but for, for whatever reason, it didn't. Yeah, click, you didn't, you didn't follow, follow that path, but that is fine. Uh, I think that is, uh, that is fine, totally. Uh, but overall, I feel that you also have to practice to do debugging faster. So I feel that you are very slow on the debugging. I see. Um, yeah. This is something, unfortunately, people are trying uh, lit code a lot. Uh, maybe you are one of these people, which is fine for the purpose of practicing. But, but during the interview, you are not allowed to run your code. As, at least I know that in the fan companies, they don't allow you to run the code and run a couple of times until you get it right. So you have to be able to convince yourself and the interviewer that your code is working fine. And in order to do that, you have to debug that the same thing that I, I just showed it to you, okay? And maybe a little bit practice should help you to kind of, you know, go to that. So usually you have to communicate your algorithm to the interviewer before starting to code. I feel that also you are lagging a little bit mm -hmm. on the explanation. Maybe you have to try to make it really simple, right? Yeah. What is the, what is like? I think you were talking about the fact that I want to find those elements, but then I was asking, what is the logic that you want to find that element? So this is not super trivial, right? How do you know that this is the element that should be swapped, right? For example, in the very beginning, I noticed that you had a misunderstanding that the elements are consecutive to each other, which is not the case, right? Uh, anyway, so my, my point here is that try to summarize your idea uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a very simple, explanation to the interviewer and also it is also good that you can summarize your time and space complexity before starting to code okay gotcha okay yeah i think so the feedback so, so i mean to summarize um just more talking um about my overall plan at the beginning mm -hmm. um maybe ask more clarifying questions to sort of understand the inputs better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and just try to come up with this. So, so, what's your strat? Like, what's the best strategy to Im improve like debugging skills? I mean, I just have I a high amount of anxiety. I would my brain say sort of that shuts down. When, yeah, yeah, when you are practicing, practice. yeah, when you are practicing, just instead of running uh, through the lead code or whatever whatever environment that you have, try to uh, go to one of the examples and run your. Uh, it's you have to mentally go to your code and keep track of the variables and see if it is, what is the output that is generating, okay? So uh, the, the input shouldn't be very long, uh, otherwise mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time, right? Okay. If you if you do this practice a couple of times, it becomes much easier, right? Because at any point you have access that to the variables, right? And then for every line of the code, you should be able to, what is the, what is the decision that you can make, okay? And then you have to, after some practice. To me, it seems that you have not done that at all. Uh, at least you haven't been trying to communicate this to some other person. That that that, that was- Oh, no. That yeah, yeah. This, is, this is my first one, so. 
it's, it's been a minute. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really good feedback. It sounds like, I mean, I've just been working through sort of getting the algorithms together, try to remember the patterns. Um, but it seems like spend less time on that now and more time on just sort of debugging skills, writing out this sort of line 19 through 22 um, would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Sounds Thanks good. so any much. Questions? Any questions for me? Uh, no, I, I don't think I have any more questions. Okay. Do you have any more feedback yes. for me or? No. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye.